All right, today we're in section 9.1, um, finding square roots. Okay, so there's some important information we need to know, and, um, and we're going to be repeating this information a lot in this chapter, so um, it's definitely not the last time you're going to hear it. Squaring a number and finding the square root of a number, those are opposite operations. Okay, so if I square something and then I turn around and take the square root, those operations undo each other. That's what we see here. 2 squared equals 4, and the square root of 4 equals 2. All right, so a perfect square has a factor. Remember, a factor can be divided into that number, but there's something special about this factor. It can be multiplied by itself to equal that number. All right, so... What are our perfect squares? You need to have the first 15 perfect squares memorized. What do I mean by a perfect square? I mean if you take each one of those numbers and multiply that number by itself, the product is a perfect square. Okay? And you'll see why that's important in a minute. So what's 1 times 1, guys? Here we go. 1. 2 times 2. 4. 3 times 3. 9. 4 times 4, Six. 16, and now let's just say the rest. We obviously know it's 5, 6, 7, all the way through. 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, 169, 196, and 225. So I want you to think for a minute, okay? That's 15 numbers. 15 out of, what was our highest number? 225 numbers. Only 15 of them are perfect squares. What does that mean? That means only those 15 numbers, I could take the square root, and my square root is a whole number. So if I choose any other number, 1 through 225, 200, the square root of 200 will not be a perfect square. It's not going to be an even whole number. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So our perfect squares, a pretty common thing. 15 out of 225 numbers? No, they're not. All right. Which works to your advantage because it's not like you have 50 numbers to memorize or something crazy. Okay. Now the radical. The radical is positive. So if only if all you see is the radical, that's the square root symbol. That's positive unless there's another sign in front of it. Okay, so you do need to know that also. All right, so here we go. Finding the square roots, plural, of a perfect square. Finding the square roots of a perfect square. Say, why in the world would it be plural, more than one? Well, I am looking for a number, okay, a factor of 49, that can be multiplied by itself to equal 49. Anybody have a guess? Seven, right? Seven times seven is 49. So it was kind of like, what's the work there? You have to have it memorized. There is no work. But just like seven times seven is 49. I'm just showing you some work here, um, like some of the mental work, but you don't have to show this on your homework. What's negative seven? times negative 7. It is also positive 49. So when it says the square roots of the number, here's how you write it. Positive, negative 7. Because both positive and negative 7 could be multiplied by itself to equal 49. All right, I want you to try the other three. Remember that positive negative symbol in front of the number that's really important. If you don't have that, it's actually not correct. All right, so what about 100, Carson? Put positive, negative 10. Positive, negative 10. What about 121? Other Carson? Positive, negative 11. Good job, positive, negative 11. And Clinton, what about 36? Positive, negative 6. All right, awesome. Anybody hoping that's on the quiz? <laughs> yeah, right? Okay, good. We're off to a good start. All right, so now we're finding square roots. So what's the difference between 
this example and the last example. What do you see that's different in this example? A different symbol. Different symbols. You see the square root. You see the radical. So now your the sign of your answer is definitive. It's not positive negative anymore unless there's a positive negative sign in front of it. Okay? So if all you see is the radical like you do on square root of 25, if all you see is the radical, the radical is positive. So the square root of 25 is 5. But now, for the square root of 49, we see a negative in front of it, right? Mm -hmm. So because that negative is out there, I would say the, square, the negative square root of 49 okay. is negative 7. <clears throat> Anybody want to take a shot at positive negative square root of 16? What do you think that answer is going to be? Clinton? No. Andrew? Positive negative for you. you got to keep that sign, okay? Whatever sign is in front of the radical, you have to keep that sign in your answer. All right, Cheyenne, what do you think about the last one, the negative square root of 81? What do you think that will be? Anybody help her out? Logan? Negative nine. Negative nine. Negative nine. All right, good job, guys. Doing well. So now what do you see that's different in the next example? Fraction. You see fraction. So when the entire fraction is under the square root symbol, okay, what we're going to see in this section is we'll see that both the numerator and denominator are perfect squares. What does that mean? That means I could take the square root of both of them, okay? That's the same thing as saying the square root of 9 over the square root of 16, okay? So you understand that you don't necessarily have to divide 9 over 16, although we will see problems where that could be helpful. Right now, because they're both perfect squares, it would be better just to, what's the square root of 9? 3. 3, and what's the square root of 16? So 3 over 4 is my answer. Okay. All right. Let's look down now to this one. Okay. Y'all try to do, actually, just try to do the other three. I'm going to walk around and, and check to see how y'all are doing. All right. Matthew, what would you get for the bottom left problem? No. Carson? Positive negative 6 over 9. But then can you reduce that? Positive negative 2 thirds. Okay, so you can reduce it. All right. Um, what about the next one? Carson? I got positive negative 2 over 5. Um, oh, okay, you did the one on the bottom? Yes, positive, negative, 2 over 5. Perfect. Can't be reduced. That's it. All right, what about the top right one, Andrew? Uh, negative, one plus. negative 1 over 10. All right, because we're just taking the square root of numerator and denominator. All right, you guys go with that? <coughs> okay, so next example now, we're going to start evaluating these expressions Okay, so order of operations is going to be important. We want to evaluate the square root. I mean, nobody wants to do 5 times the square root of 36 before taking the square root. Okay, so we must take the square root of 36, and when there's no symbol in front between the 5 and the radical, that means multiplication. Okay, so once we take the square root of 36, what is that? 6. So 5 times 6 plus 7. What's 5 times 6? 30. 30 plus 7? 37. 37. All right, good job. Ooh. Now look at this one over here in the top right. The square root of 81 squared, okay? So the order that you do this is important because 81 times 81 is gets to be a pretty big number. Wouldn't you agree? 
But remember what I said at the beginning of the lesson about <coughs> inverse operations undoing each other? The square root and the square of a number actually cancel out each other. And what's left would be your answer. And I'll prove it in just a second, okay? So remember what I said. The square root and the square. If the same... If those two operations are happening to the same number, they cancel each other out. And what's left is that number. So what is the square root of 81? Let's just, let's just do this to see if it actually works out, okay? So square root of 81 is 9. What's 9 squared? 81. 81. So there that proves our point. If you're taking the square root of the same number that you're squaring, they cancel each other out. So... That saves you this step if you can recognize that. You don't have to show it, okay? Your calculators aren't doing the work for you, so if, if you don't show work there, I know that you recognized the rule, okay? All right, let's look at these fractions over here. This is like, what in the world, okay? Because I actually can't take the square root of 18 evenly. Is 18 a perfect square? No. So when I see that a fraction is not a perfect square, I'm going to look to see if, what if I simplify this fraction? What's 18 divided by 2? 9. So what if I simplified this to make it 1 fourth plus the square root of 9? Can I take the square root of 9 now? All right, so if these fractions aren't perfect squares, try to reduce the fraction, and maybe that becomes a perfect square. Maybe it doesn't, but hopefully it, it does, okay? So now I have one-fourth plus three. But I can't just add them together and say three and one-fourth. That's not the right answer. Because I can't add fractions without a what? common denominator. So a whole number I can place over what? Over 1. What would I multiply this by to make it equal to 4? Four? 4. Okay, so I multiply top and bottom by 4, and I get 1 fourth plus 12 over 4. Now, I can finish. What's going to be my answer? 13 over, 13 over 4. When I add fractions, I do not add the denominator. When I add fractions, I just bring over my common denominator. So, Ms. Kinder, can I make it a mixed number? Sure, but you don't have to. You can leave it improper. All right, I want you to try the last one. Order of operations is so important here because we must multiply before we can subtract. Well, in order to multiply, I got to take the square root of 25. What's the square root of 25? 5. What's 3 times 5? 15. So 12 <coughs> minus 15. If you do 12 minus 3 first and get 9, then you'll say 9 times 5 is 45, and that's wrong. 12 minus 15 is what? Negative 3. Negative 3. Subtract and take. Negative 3. All right. How do we do? Okay. So you see, they get a little harder. But it's still just that same process following order of operations. Okay. We've got a few. We've got a little decimal in there. Not a huge deal. Okay, I want to give you a minute just to look at these and, and see if you can come up with your answers. Any, any guesses what you would do first on that problem on the left? Simplify what? Okay, so 28 is not a perfect square. Can't take the square root of 28, evenly at least. What's 28 divided by 7, though? 4. So if you simplify the fraction underneath the radical first, now it becomes a much cleaner number, right? The square root of 4 
plus, yes, plus 2.4. So 2 plus 2.4 equals 4.4. Okay, 4.4. So I can solve the next problem without even showing any work at all. Carson? How'd you get 11 so quick like that? I took the 4 because we square and then the other square, they just cancel off. Yes. Love it. Love it. He was listening, okay? So the square root and the, the square cancel out. So you don't have to worry about, oh, what's the square root of 4? Okay, now I have to square it. No. They cancel each other out. Now, if you do all that work, you should still get the answer. It's just you've got to do the work. Okay? So now that I see that they cancel, 15 minus 4 is 11. And that's my answer. All right. Equations. Just like we actually just said that a square root is the inverse of a square. So if I'm solving an equation and the x or the variable is squared, remember with the other um, equations that we've solved, let's say it was 3x equals 12. We always did inverse operations to solve that equation, right? So for 3x equals 12, what do I do to solve for x? divide because there's multiplication there, right? So with these equations, if you're squaring the variable, what do you think you would do to get that operation to cancel out? You would take the, what's the opposite? The square root, okay? So if it's x squared equals 81, and I need to get x by itself, I'm going to take the square root of x squared, and that will give me x, okay? But my rule says whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. So if I took the square root of x squared, guess what I'm doing to 81? Taking the square root. So what's my answer? Not exactly. Not exactly. Because in the original problem, was there a radical in my original problem, or did I put it there? I put it there, right? So because there was no radical in my original Because there's no radical in my original problem, it actually is positive negative. And positive negative. Let me show you why. Okay? So if I were to check this, is 9 times 9 81? is negative 9 times negative 9, 81. Yes, so that's why it's both. All right, so let's do this one. K squared equals 169. Let's see who can solve that one. All right, so I take the square root, and I take the square root, and K equals positive negative 13. Can anybody explain to me why it's both positive and negative? Because 13 is times 13, which is 169, and negative 13 is times negative 13. Good, because the positive and negative, when I multiply them by themselves, are still the answer. Now I see something different happening on the next one. What do you see here? Okay, so there's a number next to the variable. Now it's not just the variable. It's, there's more than one thing going on in the equation. So here's your rule. You move everything to the other side first. You take the square root last. Do not take the square root here. If you take the square root here, you have to take the square root of 3. So logically, it doesn't make sense anyway. All right? What can I do to get this 3 to cancel out? What operation is here between 3 and A? Multiplication. That's multiplication. What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. Division. So I can divide by 3 both sides to get that 3 to cancel out. So now I have A squared 
equals, what's 48 divided by 3? What's 48 divided by 3? Anybody know? What do you think? 48 divided by 3? 16. Okay. All right, now, okay, this, this is looking pretty doable. What do I need to do now? Square root. Square root it. Take the square root of both sides, and my answer, A equals what? Positive, positive. positive negative 4. So, Ms. Kinder, what if I forget positive negative? It, it's going to be points off, okay? It won't be the whole thing wrong, but it definitely would be points off. All right, look at this last one. What do you think about this last one? What do you think you would do first? Anybody just want to take a shot at it? Like, what do you think you would do first? What do you think? Carson? Not yet, because if I divide 4, I actually have to divide negative 6 by 4. I'd have to divide the whole thing. So before I do that, I must move what's not connected to the variable. I need to add 6 first. Okay, we always move the addition and subtraction first. So now I have 4b squared equals 196. Okay, so now, do I take the square root now? No, I don't, I don't want to take the square root. Even though I could technically take the square root of 4, I don't want to do that. I always do the square root last. Logan, what do you think you're going to do now? Got to get that B by itself. Very good. Divide both sides by 4. Divide by 4, both sides. <clears throat> and B squared equals 30. 40, <laughs> 49. All right, now home stretch. What do I do now? What's my last step? You square root it. And B equals 7. B equals 7. Oh, what did I forget? Positive, Positive negative. Positive negative 7. I didn't forget it on the others, did I? Okay, good. All right. Is that it? That was the last one, right? Challenge. Oh, we got a challenge question. Ooh, it's going to be good. <laughs> okay, let's just take a minute and try to figure this out. Y'all, you guys work together. <coughs> What's step one? Yeah. Nope. Add 385. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to get B by itself. So add 385. What's, n oh, oh, sorry, 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 hold on, five. Um, so what's negative 42 plus 385? Yes, 343 equals 7B squared. Now what do I do? Divide by 7. So it actually wasn't that difficult. It seemed difficult. 49 equals B squared. Square root it, B equals seven. positive negative uh, 7. Positive negative All right, and that'll be it for 9.1.